So, again, uh, I want to thank you for uh, for joining us today. Uh, as I said, uh, for those that are just joining us, my name is Charles Sammons. I'm a sales engineer here at BizNet Software, and uh, we're going to be talking about the top five th factors to consider uh, when choosing a uh, reporting solution. So what we're going to uh, cover today is uh, these five things. Okay? Uh, number one, uh, when you're looking for a reporting solution, the, the first thing that you could, should think about is, can it integrate business data from multiple sources? Okay? Um, how does it ensure the accuracy of my reports? Uh, number three, is it easy to learn and easy to use? Does it automate the reporting and communications processes? And finally, what is the level of effort for implementation and what can I expect in terms of support and training afterwards? Okay. We're also going to do a product uh, demonstration. I'm going to show you a Biz Insight. Uh, it is our product that, uh, that we uh, developed that uh, allows you to do uh, reporting in Excel and we'll uh, answer these questions and uh, we'll talk about them and I'll show you just exactly what we mean uh, when we talk about some of the best practices in uh, a reporting solution and when you are automating uh, Excel spreadsheets. And then uh, you'll notice too that at the on the console uh, this uh, session is in uh, listen-only mode, but on the console you do have a, a mechanism for asking questions. Uh, all you have to do is go down to the question section, type in your question, and uh, we'll answer it uh, when, we, uh, when we get an opportunity. And hopefully we can answer all of your questions. If not, uh, we will provide a, a, an email address where you can uh, send those questions and we'll be happy to get that information out to you. All right? So, in today's marketplace, uh, companies must adapt to fluid, ever-changing conditions. Right? The ability to make quick and accurate business decisions, business decisions can mean the difference between success and failure. This requires companies to uh, analyze data from a growing number of sources. The veracity of that data requires a solution capable of combining myriad transactions and data in an interface that gives the business user the ability to quickly create and distribute information. Right? So let's talk about the first thing that we, uh, that we mentioned. Can, the, uh, can this application integrate business data from multiple solutions or multiple sources? Um, Multi-source uh, data integration encompasses more than just consolidating data from multiple applications. It also includes multiple data types at the application level. Okay? Most data applications have two different types of data, informational and transactional. Informational data is uh, often referred to as metadata. This is the data, um, the static data types in your application, like your um, your customer contact information, your employees' contact information, you know their personal information, um, your product lists, uh, you, you know your the item codes and and uh, the products that you sell. A lot of times you'll have uh, inventory lists. Uh, where are your warehouses? The uh, the locations of your uh, cost centers and your branches, things like that. The static data um, that you that has to be stored in your in your database it has to go somewhere because you have to be able to access it. Then you have transactional data, and that's the data that relates to uh, what you do with those things. Orders, uh, you know, your customers are going to submit orders. You're going to submit purchase orders to your vendors. Um, you know, invoices. Uh, you know, uh, payroll uh, slips, shipments, you know, uh, on and on. The transactional data needs to be associated with your, uh, with your uh, informational data. They need to be able to work together functionally within a, a report so that uh, you can uh, produce reports that are meaningful. The, when we talk about uh, data integration, there are basically two roads that, that you can take. There's in-memory analytics and there's data warehousing. Okay? In-memory analytics is uh, basically uh, what that means is, is that the data that is being queried is coming from a data source that is stored in, on, in your uh, local memory, right, in your RAM as opposed to the, a database that's stored on a physical drive somewhere. Okay? Um, this is uh, 
the kind of data that allowed that is readily available. As we know, RAM is uh, is is fast uh, seek storage, uh, even more so than the uh, solid state uh, hard drives that uh, you know that we're using today. Um, RAM is still the fastest method or the fastest uh, storage medium for uh, writing and, uh, and and storing and accessing data. A data warehouse on the other side, uh, on the other hand, is a central repository of integrated data from a, a multiple sources. Um, basically, uh, what they'll do is you'll sit down and you'll determine all of the different databases that you need to pull data from, and they will create one big database that pulls uh, records and and pulls field and pulls field information and and data from. Uh, these multiple sources brings it into a single database and then the application writes to that database and these databases are stored on on physical disks so these are not typically uh, used uh, in memory they're these are large data sets um, that that aggregate data from uh, multiple uh, sources the uh, uh, there have been a number of studies done that talk about the uh, that best practices uh, for uh, for doing uh, reporting uh, in Excel, for doing you know for using reporting applications in general, and just uh, data analytics, and in-memory analytics is far and away the uh, considered best practice for uh, any applications that are being written to uh, do these kinds of things. Um, according to uh, a, a paper that was written by. Uh, Steven Swoyer in May 2013, what he said was, in-memory analytics is orders of magnitude more responsive than a conventional database, which is able to store just a portion of a database in physical memory. For the rest, it must read from and write to physical disk. As a result, in-memory access times are measured in nanoseconds or billionths of a second. The access times of even the fastest physical disk devices are measured in milliseconds, i.e. thousandths of a second. So you can see there's a pretty disparate difference between uh, data that is accessed in uh, local memory and data that's being accessed on, uh, on a, a physical disk. So, um, so we're going to talk about, you know, we'll, we'll talk about biz insight and, and physical uh, and what it means to, uh, uh, to pull your data from a, uh, a local uh, cached source as opposed to a physical disk out on a SQL server or out on a, a database server. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is data accuracy. Okay? Um, the because question number two is um, how does the application ensure the accuracy of my reports? This is extremely important. Uh, in a, a study that was done um, in May of 2008 by uh, one of uh, Raymond Arpenko, he's a, an industry expert. He um, who studied specifically the uh, the spreadsheet errors and the impact of those errors on the a, an enterprise uh, company and, and and how does it affect the bottom line. Um, what he found was industry experts have said that 20 to 40 percent of all spreadsheets contain errors. So these uh, spreadsheets that are going out that the, you are making decisions on, uh, that you are, are using to uh, disseminate information about your business, about the condition of, of the market, you know how you're doing, um, 20 to 40 percent of all those spreadsheets contain errors. Uh, Coopers and Libran in England found 90% of all spreadsheets with more than 150 rows that it audited contained errors. Uh, now think about the size of the spreadsheets that you're currently creating or the reports that you're creating. Um, if you think about 150 rows, that's, uh, that's nothing. So when you start getting into larger data sets and uh, larger uh, spreadsheets, more, um, you know, more data means more uh, room for error. And like I said, in the case of uh, this study, Coopers and Librown found that 90% of uh, all spreadsheets with more than 150 rows that it audit contained errors. Um, one Price Waterhouse consultant uh, talked about a, a, a high profile large customer that he worked with um, and uh, was doing some consulting for audited four 
large spreadsheets that they were using to to make decisions and do business. And and in just those four spreadsheets, you found over 128 errors. So data accuracy is uh, is extremely important. So not only is uh, accuracy important, but just what does that mean? Why um, why is it so important? What does it mean for um, for a, a standard uh, uh, enterprise uh, company? According to that same survey, they um, they talked to 106 industry spreadsheet developers, and what they found was uh, only seven percent of those spreadsheets are of low importance, while 39 percent were considered high importance. So 40% of the spreadsheets that are going out are considered uh, to be important to the, uh, the impact of day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, activity, so the, the daily business of that company. 27% um, of those spreadsheets were used to modify existing corporate data. So, um, so almost a third of those spreadsheets were used to um, to modify the data that the company uses to base their decisions on, uh, forty nine percent created new data. So half of those spreadsheets were used to produce uh, new data that these decisions are being based on. Um, Sixty seven percent were run on a regular basis. Um, Sixteen percent occasionally, and only seventeen percent once or a few times. So almost seventy percent of those of the spreadsheets that are be, being created are run on a regular basis. And when you consider that the, um, the veracity of that data um, and the high number of errors that are going out in these large spreadsheets, um, that's pretty scary. Right? Two-thirds of the uh, spreadsheets are used uh, most likely a regular basis could mean daily, uh, multiple times during the day. Um, but you can imagine how quickly these errors are being propagated throughout the uh, throughout the industry, or and throughout the company. Um, only 17% had results used only by the developer, while 23% had results used by many departments in the organization. So these are spreadsheets are being created, they're being sent out, and um, a number of them are being used all over the company. I mean, think about the the templates that you create, the reports that you uh, that you use. Um, think about how um, you know somebody creates a spreadsheet. They send it to one department. Um, maybe it's a, a form that uh, gets used company wide, and that goes throughout the throughout the company. And 29% had results used outside the firm. So you know, think about that in terms of um, how far these the data from these spreadsheets actually reaches. Uh, when not only is it reaching all of the uh, you know the corners of your company, but um, in in at least a third of the almost a third of the cases, it's going outside the company as well, and that data is uh, is being used by other companies and, and other resources to make decisions um, based on information that uh, that you've provided. So, what are some things that can be done to uh, to improve uh, the accuracy of your spreadsheets. Well, according to smartaccounting.com, some uh, best practice steps that you can take to improve your data is one, um, they recommend things like using range names. Okay? Uh, keep formulas simple. Uh, range names are, uh, the for those of you uh, who are very familiar with Excel, you'll know this, but uh, range uh, names are uh, for instance, revenue accounts. Somebody may go in and set up a number of accounts uh, for a uh, for a revenue um, uh, for a revenue uh, spreadsheet, right? To show like a, an income statement. And what they'll do is they'll go in and use a uh, a range name, uh, maybe called sales or called uh, you know uh, sales discounts or called uh, uh, revenue. And what they'll do is uh, they'll they'll create it once. You can check it. You know it's accurate. You'll give that a, a range name, and then every time you want to access those accounts, you will use that range name, and then that ensures accuracy. So you're not having to continually uh, retype those uh, account numbers in and uh, 
introduce the possibility of uh, errors and typos. Um, keeping formulas simple uh, is a very easy way to uh, ensure accuracy because it's it's easy to audit. Uh, you know, sums are very easy. You you look at the range of what it's adding. Um, if you, if necessary, you could go in and and use a calculator, right, to uh, to check the the accuracy if you needed to. Keeping formulas simple will make sure that if there is a problem, that anyone can follow the logic in your spreadsheet, and and now you have multiple people finding uh, those errors. Um, organize your workbook by function, right? Don't try to include uh, multiple uh, function types in a single worksheet, meaning um, like a, uh, an income statement, for instance, is meant to add and subtract, right? Um, whereas in a, a budget uh, spreadsheet, you might do, uh, you might have add and subtract, but then you also want to do uh, variances. So you'll have some uh, formulas in there for you know, dividing. And what they're saying is, is that try to keep these functions together. Don't try to do too much on a single spreadsheet. Divide them up. Um, if you do your workbook correctly and you do it uh, and you make it easy to navigate, then you can divide these things up into uh, multiple worksheets. And then finally they say use line graphs to uncover unusual results. Line graphs can help you um, quickly get to um, see dis discrepancies or di see disparate uh, uh, points in your data, and that can point to an error, maybe a, a typo. If you see a, a line that's you know traveling along at a certain <laughs> level and then all of a sudden it dips way down, you know that uh, there might be a problem there. Maybe a, a zero was left off or, or something like that. Line graphs can, um, can help you quickly uh, see that uh, you know that your data is uh, at least looks uh, looks accurate and appears to be accurate. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, the easy to learn, easy to use. Is it um, is it is it easy to learn? Um, Mark Moore is a business industry expert in accelerated learning, and what he said was some some things that you can do for best practices to make learning easier is one. Cash in on your uniqueness. Okay? Number two is question, question, question. And number three is learn with others. Um, in terms of, of spreadsheets, the, a lot of companies uh, use Excel. Excel currently has over uh, 1.7 billion users worldwide. And what that means is, is that the, uh, there are billions of spreadsheets out there. And not, and I'm going to guess that most uh, uh, of them are different. There's not. Uh, I don't know that I would say that there's no two alike, but um, for the most case, um, the spreadsheet is only as uh, as uh, common as its user, right? So in that sense, uh, the spreadsheets are, are um, unique uh, to the company, to the user. Uh, every company has different uh, formats that they like to use, different fonts, different things. And so they're saying, cash in on your uniqueness. Find a solution that allows you to take advantage of the spreadsheets that you use and the formats that you've put together, that, you, that you're already uh, have incorporated into your corporate culture. Right? Question, question, question. Find a solution that gives you the ability to constantly ask questions, to constantly be learning, to leverage not only the existing uh, knowledge base that you have uh, in Excel, but also uh, um, that gives you the ability to continually ask questions and to learn more and to um, and that's going to be available to you um, when you have those questions. And then finally, learn with others. Uh, community learning is has long been uh, deemed the the best way to uh, to get together and uh, uh, fire ideas back and forth and and bounce things off of each other. That's why there's so many uh, user groups that abound in blogs and and uh, online communities and uh, and even uh, you know offline communities that get together and discuss uh, a lot of these things. So. What uh, what I want to do now is uh, I'm going to uh, show you uh, Biz Insight. I'm going to show you our uh, product because, after all, um, as we mentioned, uh, we want to show you, you know, what are the top five things that you should consider um, 
when purchasing a solution, and how does Biz Insight help you um, with those uh, with those factors? How do how is Biz Insight um, a, a in our opinion the best candidate for uh, for that solution? So I'm going to uh, if you go uh, uh, notice here. Uh, I'm going to bring up Excel, and uh, we're just going to walk through some uh, some basic reports. I want to show you some of the functionalities um, that we are uh, that we that we've talked about. So the 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 first thing when we talked about integrating uh, data from multiple sources, uh, remember I I mentioned uh, in uh, informational data along with transactional data. Uh, if you uh, what a lot of companies are doing is when they go to create a spreadsheet, uh, something like this, what they're going to do is they're going to import data from their database into Excel, and then they're going to go through a series of, of cutting and pasting and, and um, you know, calculating and, and uh, formatting and all the things that you do to get your data ready to be included into a report. Something, a report like this, most likely takes, uh, can take hours. Um, what um, what biz uh, the problem with that is uh, that for instance just something as simple as a balance uh, an account balance when you bring in uh, those those tables from your database the database tables are not designed to answer business questions they're designed for storing data so what will happen is is if you want to bring in your accounts let's say that you want to you don't want to include account numbers, right? You want to include the names of these accounts so that whoever is getting this report doesn't have to um, doesn't have to uh, uh, you know decipher the account numbers. Well, so what you're going to do is you're going to bring in that account table that has the account information in it, but it's not going to have any balance information. All it's going to have is the information about the account. It's going to have the informational data, the account number, the account name. Um, you know, it's going to have an account code. Uh, most likely, uh, maybe um, you know any anything that makes it unique. It is is it um, is it a multi currency account? You know, is it a Canadian account or Amer U.S. dollar, whatever? It's going to have information about the account, but it's not going to include any transactional data. Now, the the sheet that it, or the table that includes the balance information is most likely not going to have any information about the account itself. It's going to have balances for you, you know your periods, um, your uh, maybe your beginning balance, ending balance, uh, credits, debits for a particular period, um, and the only way that you're going to be able to associate that back to the uh, account name is with that account code. So you, so it has no identifying information in it except uh, an account code. So you have to bring these two in. You have to do all of the uh, the lookups and the and the searches and the formats and everything to uh, to bring that together. Whereas with uh, with Biz Insight, you're able to uh, use uh, informational data and bring that into your uh, onto your spreadsheet um, using both. So, for instance, something as simple as a uh, just a period balances uh, list. If I come over here, um, what Biz Insight does, this is, uh, this is our, our product. And what we do is we give you a navigation screen. And that navigation screen has functions and, uh, and data sets. Uh, and these data sets are just that. They are sets of data. So I can come over here, and I can uh, pull a balances table, for instance. If I bring that and I drop that onto the uh, worksheet, uh, it's going to come up and ask me for some basic information, like maybe what's what company ID do I want to use, and uh, and what fiscal year uh, do I want to use. So I can put that you know, information in, and uh, I say OK. It's going to go out and pull a a list of that uh, of those account balances from the database. Now notice that I have my um, I have my account numbers in here. Um, but I also have my account information like account group, um, uh, the account number. I have my formatted account number. We've, we've broken it out by segments. Um, it also and it, it also includes all of the um, includes all of the uh, balance information for a particular period. Now I can use these uh, account groups to uh, pull that data together, or 
Um, if I want to, I can also use uh, information like, let's say that um, I have a, a segment here. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, so we know that this, uh, that this segment here is 4150. Okay, let's say that I have, I want to find out what the name of that, uh, of that uh, uh, segment is or that account. Um, I have informational functions in uh, Biz Insight that I can use to go and find that. I can use a segment description. Um, if I bring that out and drop that here, okay, this is one of the functions. So as I mentioned, uh, Biz Insight allows you to use tables and functions. Um, so I just pulled the table, um, and uh, I've got all of my account information off of there with my balances, but now um, I want to, uh, I'm going to use a function to pull, um, to pull the name of that account. So I might use uh, something like, uh, uh, let's see, let me, uh, let me go look here. Uh, I'm going to go down to my uh, account uh, list here, and I'm going to pull, uh, it's going to ask me what information I would like to take. This is our uh, query editor. And uh, as I showed you before, it, it allows me to quickly create a table. And we'll go into that a little more in just a second. But when I create a function, it's a, it's a wizard that will walk me through uh, the creation of that function. It'll ask me exactly what data I'm wanting to pull. So it says, what would I like to create? I tell it a function. Where is the data? I can give it, um, it, it can be stored either in Excel or it can be stored in um, uh, my ERP. Um, it'll ask me which data set I want to use. Uh, I will tell it there. And then uh, what action would I like to take? I can do a sum. As you can see, I can average. I can count. There are a number of different things that I can do. Um, in this case, I'm going to use min because I want to pull a, a text uh, um, field. And, and then it's going to ask me what information I would like returned. So I, these are all of the fields that are available to me in that, um, in that uh, uh, data set. So I can use any of these fields as my return value, and likewise, uh, you'll see here in a second that I can use any of those fields as my uh, filter value as well. So for those of you that are familiar with, uh, with pivot tables in Excel, you'll know that um, there's a lot of flexibility there, and, and Biz Insight gives you the flexibility of a pivot table, but with the ability to format it on your worksheet to look exactly like uh, the report uh, that you want it to. Um, so what I want to do here is I'm going to tell it I want to return the, uh, in this case, my segment one uh, description because I want to get the name uh, of that segment. I want to include that in my report. Um, so I'm going to come down here. The only uh, required parameter I have, obviously, is which uh, company code is that going to be coming from. And then I'm going to add a filter for, uh, for the actual segment one value. So I'm going to say equals. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to use the reference to cell where that value is. And when I say OK, I'm going to, and I'm going to anchor that here. When I say OK, it uh, is going to go out to the uh, database and it's going to pull in uh, whatever value I have for that, um, uh, for that uh, uh, segment. Now let's say that I have a uh, let's say that I have a number of segments here that uh, that I want to use. I'm going to come over here. Uh, you can see how how easy this is to do. I'm going to get a unique uh, set of uh, account numbers here, and uh, I'm going to come over here and and uh, go like this. And now. Um, because of the way that I've anchored this to, to tell it to look in column C for the account or segment value, I can now drag that down and it's going to go and pull all of the account names for each of those. So I'm using multiple uh, data sources from within, even within my, my single uh, individual database. So I'm not even pulling uh, from multiple data sources. I'm just using multiple data types within my uh, database. So now what I want to do is I want to add some transactional data to this. So um, I'm going to, I want to pull, what, are, what is my month-to-date net value for, say, uh, let's, let's try uh, 2014, and I want to do, um, I want to do number one here. I want to do uh, January. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, once again, I'm going to use our uh, query editor. And this time, I'm going to uh, uh, tell it to use a, um, I'm going to tell it to use a, uh, a balances spreadsheet that I have, uh, you know, that I've pulled with all of the uh, balances, uh, you know, my balances for a particular year. So I'm going to create a function that uh, gives me the month to date net value um, for these accounts. So I'm going to add a filter for the, uh, the year. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to find fiscal year, and I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to point to this cell here. And then I'm going to add another filter for fiscal period, and I'm going to point that here. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to anchor that to the to the row, and I'll show you why here in just a second. And then I'm going to add another filter for my segment one value because I want to pull the uh, I want to pull the uh, the data for each specific account. Now, remember, one of the things that it said for making uh, learning and use easier, uh, in and uh, ensuring the um, accuracy of your spreadsheets was to use uh, to use ranges, uh, named ranges. I can create um, a function that will allow me to use a range. If I could say I want everything, every segment one that's greater than uh, 4,000, and I can say I want every segment one that is uh, less than, say, um, 5,000, right? So what I'm doing is I'm pulling all of my, uh, my 4,000 uh, value accounts, and uh, I'm, using, uh, I'm using a range, a hard-coded range to do that. So I'd say less than or equal to 49.99, for instance. And now um, I, can, I can save this query, right? I'll call it uh, revenue, and then we'll come back to that in a second, and I'll show you um, why that's significant. But for this, uh, for the purposes of this, I'm simply going to, uh, I want to use just the uh, each individual number. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to point it here, and I'm going to anchor it by that column as well. And so I'm going to say, okay, and now it's going to go out and it's going to pull in the value from that uh, that data set for that account. Um, I want to I want that to be a positive number, obviously. So I'm going to I'm going to alter that uh, that formula just a bit, and uh, I can either um, because uh, Excel sees this as a number. Uh, this insight is integrated 100 100% uh, with Excel, so Excel sees this as a number. So I can do that. I can alter it. I can either alter it directly, or I can use Excel's formatting to uh, to make it look the way I want. Uh, maybe I'll take away that and and uh, get rid of the dollar sign, for instance. Or maybe for that first one, I'll do a dollar sign. Um, so notice that uh, I can uh, I can I can format it to look exactly the way that I want it to look. All right. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that um, formula. And I'm going to copy it down just as I did uh, before, and so now it's copied down to each of these uh, uh, each of these rows. And now um, I can come over here. I can format this, and I can make this look exactly the way uh, that I want. And I know that this data is accurate, right? Because it is connected directly to uh, the database. If I change the month. I don't have to go in and recalculate all of that information. Um, it's doing it for me because what I'm what I've done is I've dropped a function in here that's going out to my database and querying the database with the parameters that I've given it. In this case, the account number, the year, and the, uh, the month. It's querying the database and it's bringing back that value and placing it into that cell. So now. Um, what I can do is I can create reports that look like this. Here is a report that was created with uh, um, with Biz Insight. And um, if if your boss came to you and said, "Hey, I need you to put together a, a income statement for last month, um, some numbers, um, you know, and I need it ASAP," uh, you would say, "Wow, it's going to be a little while. I've got to import that data." But with but because this was created with Biz Insight, all I have to do is come up here. I'm going to update the year. And I'm going to update the month, and notice that it uh, changes for me automatically. And uh, this this report is updated and ready to go. Um, let's say I send it off. They go, "Wow, that was fast!" 
you know, how, how did you do that? And he said, well, I'm using Biz Insight. And uh, the next thing they're going to say is, uh, you know, are these numbers right? And you're going to say, absolutely, this, this is connected directly to our database. So these are our most current numbers. Okay, great. Uh, didn't realize you could get it so quickly. Could you get me a, a quarterly statement? <laughs> you're going to say, not a problem. You're going to come back here, and you're going to say, okay, we want to go back three months. And then you're going to grab this column here, and uh, you're going to copy that across. And boom, just like that. Now, notice the title is updated. It says three months trending income statement for the year ended 2015. I now have three months worth of uh, accurate and uh, um, up-to-date data in front of me. This report's ready to go. Suppose they said, hey, can I get 12 months worth of data, uh, a year-end statement? You're going to say, not a problem. We're going to change that to January. And as, as you can already imagine, I'm going to copy this across. And uh, just like that, I have a... I have a 12-month uh, trended statement um, for uh, the year 2015. Notice my, um, my title is updated. I have a 12-month trending income statement for the year 2015. This report was quick, easy to build. We did it in just a matter of seconds. We went from an old one-month report to a current month-ended report to a current quarter-ended report to a current year-ended report all with just a few mouse clicks in a matter of seconds. And this data is accurate because it's being pulled directly from the database. There's no typos to be had um, because if you, you know, a typo in the function uh, is going to pull back nothing, right? So, and you're going to get an error. So you know that this data is correct because it's coming directly from uh, the database. If you want to do a historical version of this report, you can certainly do that. All you have to do is update the year. Notice it goes out and it pulls the uh, 2014 numbers. Suppose your fiscal period uh, goes from uh, September to August. Not a problem. We can do that as well. Okay? It's very flexible, very quick, very easy to use. Notice now I have a 12-month trended uh, uh, statement that goes from um, September to uh, to August, and it represents uh, my uh, fiscal period. Um, let's say that I have, uh, I want to, I'm going through this report, and I want to see the detail for these values. This is the other great thing um, about this uh, report, and using Biz Insight, and having Excel connected directly to your database. I can come in here, I can say, if, if your boss says, hey, can I get some detail, the detail for the revenue hardware account for January? Not a problem. You can tell them. All you have to do is go right-click on it, bring up that uh, drill-down uh, uh, menu, click on table, and it will go out, and it'll bring up the line item detail from the database that makes up that value. Uh, do they, if they like pivot tables, uh, not a problem. All they have to do is right-click on it, go back to the, that uh, menu, and they can select a pivot table. As I mentioned, uh, because of the integration that Biz Insight has with Excel, all of this data is being pulled directly from the database and fed into Excel. I haven't had to type anything in. I haven't had to uh, change anything um, in terms of, uh, you know, any, any ad hoc information. Everything has been controlled by the spreadsheet. So all of this information is locked to my data, and it's accurate. Uh, notice here with uh, pivot table, I can take full advantage of uh, even the pivot table functionality. I could do something like uh, maybe I want to make uh, my company, uh, my filter, and my fiscal year. I want to use those as filters. And then for my rows, maybe I want to use my account number uh, as my uh, row header. And then I have my month to date net value in here. So uh, I have all the flexibility of a pivot table. And, uh, and, and even one more, if I want the detail for any of these, I just double click on it and I can still get the um, the detail directly from the database. So I can go from my report directly to a list, or I can go from my report to a pivot table to a list. But either way, I have the ability to move around in that data. And so you can imagine what this does for auditing. Uh, somebody comes in, they look at your report, they see, um, they see a value, and they say, you know, can you show me uh, the transactions that make up that value? Not a problem. Right there in front of them, you simply go, you drill down into it, bring up that list, and now you have exactly the information that you need to go and, and pull those transactions or pull that, uh, that information. So uh, very, uh, very quick, very easy, very flexible. Um, the, uh, the other thing that, uh, uh, that we talked about was um, the, uh, in, in ensuring the accuracy of your reports is 
can I control the information that my that my users put in to uh, the spreadsheet? And the uh, the answer to that is, is absolutely. Um, Excel has a number of ways that you can control what uh, data goes into a field. In this case, we have um, uh, we have uh, validation lists. So the only thing that can that will go into this field is uh, is information from uh, this validation list. So they can't uh, they can't alter that. I can lock these fields, um, and I can make sure that uh, that this. Uh, report is 100% accurate before um, before it even goes out. So, the one of the biggest problems facing companies today is inaccurate data and the ability to make decisions off of inaccurate data, or the ability to make decisions off of accurate data. And the problem of of having that inaccurate data to make decisions, we eliminate that because we we take the um, the need to, uh, you know, all of those things that you do that introduce errors, uh, you no longer have to do that. The functions are, are simple, they're done for you. You simply uh, add them to the, uh, to the worksheet and Biz Insight and your ERP database will do the work for you. Um, the other thing that it mentioned was adding line graphs to, um, to find uh, disparate data. You can, uh, when you're building these uh, worksheets, um, you can add, uh, line graphs to your spreadsheets and they will show you um, any discrepancies that you might have. So this can actually help you determine if your, uh, if your database, if your ERP system is being uh, uh, utilized correctly. Um, here we have a, this is a rolling 12 month uh, report. Uh, notice my, it shows my current period is October 2014. Uh, I can come up here and, and change the, uh, the year and month values. Notice that it will update for me uh, automatically. And not only does my current period update, but the previous 11 months update as well. But as I, as I do this, um, notice I have, I've used uh, uh, grouping so that I can uh, do roll-ups so that if somebody wants to expand uh, a particular section and see the individual values that make up that number, we can do that. And again, we can even uh, we can even uh, drill down into those uh, uh, into those numbers and see the individual transactions that uh, that make up that value. So this is, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we're not just pulling data from multiple sources. We're actually um, pulling data from um, from multiple sources inside your ERP system, bringing them all together and allowing them to work. Um, congruently and very well within a, a worksheet. The other thing that we're doing is we're, uh, we're keeping functions together uh, in each of these worksheets. So you're, you're grouping functions. This is, uh, um, you know, reporting is just a natural way to, um, to group functions together, income statements, uh, balance sheets. Um, you know, here's a balance sheet that has just balance sheet information. Um, so you don't have to worry about somebody who creates a, a spreadsheet because um, a lot of times what you'll see is they want to have the data right at their fingertips. So what they will do is they will have a, a functioning spreadsheet that, that includes everything on a single worksheet. And that's when you start running into errors. And then what will happen is, is when they go to create the reports, they'll pull that information off, they'll format it into a report, and, and send it off. But now with Biz Insight, you can create functional reports, reports that can be used to pull exactly the data that you're wanting to pull. And, um, and you can ensure that you're using um, your grouping functions together in, uh, in logical reports that, again, uh, help to eliminate uh, inaccuracies and, uh, and help to eliminate uh, complexity, too, that might make it uh, difficult for somebody to come in and, and learn and pick up. Um, as, I, as we change these values, you'll notice that, the, um, that that graph at the bottom of the sheet changes as well. Um, because of the integration that we have with Biz, with uh, Excel, um, we're able to uh, do that because Excel does not see this table as just a Biz Insight data object. It actually sees these as discrete numbers, so I can attach um, these things to it. The, the, the last thing that I wanted to show you uh, very quickly was just how easy it is to build these uh, kinds of reports um, with, uh, with Biz Insight. Now, uh, remember we talked about in-memory analytics versus data warehousing. In-memory analytics is, is fast. Um, what Biz Insight does is it will it pulls um, data uh, from your database into local cache 
so that your seek times are extremely fast. So, um, and, and you can even um, take worksheets that you've, uh, you know, tables that you've created, and you can uh, incorporate those into local memory as well and build uh, reports strictly off of those. Um, but let's, let's, uh, let's just see quickly how easy it is to build a report in Biz Insight. Um, here's a spreadsheet. It's just a standard uh, static uh, uh, spreadsheet. You probably have hundreds, if not thousands, of these out on your hard drive, right? Again, this goes to the uh, cashing in on your uniqueness. You've already created these reports. They look the way you want. They work the way you want. Um, they do all the things that, uh, that you want them to do. Uh, you spend a lot of time getting them to these point, to this point. So Biz Insight allows you to, uh, instead of having to go and relearn the way that you build spreadsheets and relearn the way that you do reports, Biz Insight gives you the ability to simply retrofit your existing reports with uh, Biz Insight functions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to open my, my function editor, and uh, I'm going to use a, uh, I'm going to go out to a balances uh, data set because I want to pull in the uh, months to date val uh, balances for these each of these uh, accounts and uh, I'm going to tell it I want to do a function uh, I'm going to create select sum and I'm going to tell it that I want to return the month to date net value out of that table and then I'm going to tell it the filters I want to use in this case I want to use my as we saw before I want to use my fiscal year and uh, I'm going to point that here and then I want to use my fiscal period. And notice I have that uh, at the top of my column there. So I'm going to select that. All right, and I'm going to anchor it there. And uh, and then I want to use my uh, I want to use my segment value. I want to use my account number. So I'm going to go over here and and uh, select that and point here. And I'm going to anchor that to the that column. And I'm going to say OK. And so now, um, when I click OK, it's going to ask me. Notice, it asks me where I want to put it. Um, this insight allows you to, to uh, util fully utilize Excel to create reports that look exactly the way you want them to look. Um, you can place that function anywhere on that worksheet you want it to. So I'm going to say OK, and uh, notice it's going to go out to it goes out to the database and it pulls that uh, value in for me. And now. Um, if I make a change, notice I've just taken a static worksheet and I've now made it dynamic simply by adding that Biz Insight function to it. Now, to make the rest of that report uh, dynamic, all I have to do is copy that down. All right, notice that it goes and, and uh, copies that information uh, down the row automatically and it updates itself. I'm going to copy that down just like that. And now I've just uh, taken that static worksheet and I've made that entire column dynamic. Now as you can, as you remember from that, uh, that first uh, uh, report I showed you, uh, I can drag this across and now just like that I've taken this entire worksheet and I've, uh, I've made it dynamic. So Biz Insight is extremely easy to use. It allows you to cash in on the uniqueness of your um, your corporate uh, templates, uh, your spreadsheets, um, and as we talk about question, 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 we have multiple uh, ways to uh, uh, training, uh, you know, industry training. Um, we uh, have the ability to uh, uh, to let you. Um, uh, take our training classes. We have multiple tiers of training. Um, implementation and support are, are straightforward. Some of the questions that we get are, how long does it take to implement? All right. The, uh, it can be implemented in, in less than a day. Uh, it's, uh, you can, and I'm talking uh, install on all of your users, and you can be up and running. It's a, it's a click-through install. It's quick. It's fast. It's easy to use. Uh, how much training do we need? Uh, if you know Excel, training is minimal. You can cash in on the uh, and leverage the existing Excel uh, uh, knowledge base that you currently have. Do I have to buy more hardware? Uh, no. You can use all of your existing hardware because again, we uh, we integrate with Excel, so most likely you already have the the hardware that you need. And can we connect to other uh, business data? And the absolute and the answer is absolutely. BizNet's been designed to connect to multiple systems, and uh, and not only 
uh, multiple uh, systems outside your ERP, but uh, multiple data sources and types within your uh, system as well. Uh, training, we have multiple tiers available for training classes and touch-up sessions. Uh, we have a comprehensive video library of how-tos at uh, our BizNet University, and all you have to do is go to biznetsoftware.com and select BizNetU. It will take you there. There's a myriad of videos that teach you um, how to do different uh, types of spreadsheets and uh, reports with BizInsight. Um, support, uh, our, we have top-notch support uh, available 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, we have a library of knowledge base articles at biznetsoftware.com slash support and extensive documentation that comes with the, uh, the application. So just to recap very quickly, uh, Biz Insight allows you to connect directly to your ERP uh, in any database or any data source um, on premises and on the, in the cloud. We have cloud solutions as well. And you can uh, use that data to answer complex questions in seconds. Um, we have lists and super functions that, that help you to do that. And then as we mentioned, you can drill down into those details. Um, once you uh, have those reports looking the way you want, we uh, allow you to disseminate those and distribute those reports. You can re uh, distribute them in 12 different formats. Uh, you can you do multi-location reports, meaning you can pull data from multiple locations and uh, and consolidate it into a single report. And you can even set it up to uh, with triggers and timers to alert you uh, when you uh, when a certain uh, occurrence uh, happens. Um, again, Business Insight is easy to use. Anyone can build reports in minutes. Uh, you have a, a direct real-time connection to your data and connect to any data and then distribute those reports with just a single click. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I appreciate uh, you being with us today. Again, uh, my name is Charles Sammons, and uh, this is my email address. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, uh, to ask, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, get that information out to you as quickly as possible. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, you have a nice day.